partially digested acidic food called chyme which is formed inside the stomach will enter into small intestine. So after the food has come into small intestine you can see the bile juice comes from liver the pancreatic juice comes from pancreas. So that means bile and pancreatic juice both are poured into duodenum. Bile coming from liver, pancreatic juice coming from pancreas, both of them they are poured into small intestine. Now remember the chyme is highly acidic. So highly acidic food is coming into small intestine. So first it has to be neutralized. So pancreatic juice, I told you pancreatic juice is secreted by two different types of cells. One is centroacinar cells, other is basophilic cells. Centroacinar cells, they are acted upon by secreting and they produce bicarbonates and mucus. But the basophilic cells will produce the enzymes. Now, bicarbonate mucus present in pancreatic juice, they come and neutralize the acidic chyme. And also, the wall of the small intestine, the certain cells, they produce bicarbonates. So, to protect the wall of small intestine from the acidic nature of the chyme, so cells of small intestine directly produce bicarbonate. So when bicarbonates produced by pancreatic juice, considerable quantity of bicarbonates, I told you around 110 to 150 milli equivalents. So a large quantity of bicarbonate is produced. So it will neutralize the acidic food and it will convert that acidic food into alkaline nature. Now, the enzymes present in pancreatic juices, the enzymes present in intestinal juices, all these enzymes, they work in alkaline medium. They work in alkaline medium. Right? So, we will see how digestion occurs inside small intestine. And we will break that into three subheadings. First, let us see the digestion of proteins. Now we already saw that in stomach peptones and proteoses are formed. Now the pancreatic juice, the protein digesting enzymes in pancreatic juice include trypsinogen. Trypsinogen is inactive. Since it is inactive, that gen at the end is added, indicating it is inactive. The trypsinogen is activated into trypsin. It has to be activated. For that enzyme called as enterokinase. Enterokinase is an enzyme produced in intestinal juice. This, this is coming from intestinal juice. So enterokinase activates trypsinogen to trypsin. The trypsin. That the first form trypsin converts remaining trypsinogen to trypsin. Initially formed trypsin will come and converts the remaining trypsinogen to trypsin. So this is called autocatalysis. Same like as pepsin underwent autocatalysis, trypsin also underwent autocatalysis. Now, there is another enzyme called chymotrypsinogen. It's an enzyme, this is also an enzyme present in pancreatic juice. 
So both these enzymes are present in pancreatic juice only. Trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen. This is also inactive. This is activated to chymotrypsin. by trypsin. This trypsin comes and activates chymotrypsinogen to trypsin. So finally we have got two enzymes which are active. This is inactive, this is active. So we have got two enzymes. See these two enzymes are present in pancreatic juice. Chymotrypsinogen, trypsinogen are present in pancreatic juice. First trypsinogen is activated by enterokinase. Enterokinase is pr present in intestinal juice. It activates that. And that comes and uh, th that trypsin can also undergo autocatalysis. Now that trypsin comes and activates chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin. Now finally, trypsin, chymotrypsin both are formed. The trypsin and chymotrypsin both act on end products of digestion inside the stomach. The end products of digestion inside the stomach includes peptones and proteoses. Proteoses and peptones. So both of them act on peptones and proteoses to produce polypeptides. So it's broken into next level polypeptides. Now we have other enzymes which acts on polypeptides. That includes carboxypeptidase and aminopeptidase. But the carboxypeptidase is present in an active state. It is present as procarboxypeptidase. It is inactive. Pro at the beginning indicates it is inactive. Procarboxypeptidase is present in pancreatic juice. It is inactive. Same trypsin comes and activates that. Trypsin comes and activates that into carboxypeptidase. Now it's activated. It's active. The carboxypeptidase along with aminopeptidase See, carboxypeptidase, aminopeptidase. Carboxypeptidase is present in pancreatic juice. Aminopeptidase is present in intestinal juice. Both of them, they are acting on polypeptides. And it will result in formation of tripeptides and dipeptides. Tripeptides, dipeptides. Though they are producing the same products, the mode of action, if you observe, see polypeptides, say this is a polypeptide, I am taking that polypeptide. A polypeptide, you have a chains of amino acids. Amino acid means one side there is amino group, other side there is carboxylic group, CoH group. So there is one side amino group, there is an other side there is carboxylic group or acidic group. Now the carboxypeptidase, they work from this direction. They work on polypeptides from carboxylic group side. Aminopeptidase, it works in this direction. It works on polypeptide from amino group side. 
and it will break that into three pieces, two pieces like that. This work when it is working, carboxypeptidase when it is working, it can break a bond near three or two like that. So final result is tripeptide dipeptides. So carboxypeptidase is working from CO-OH carboxylic group side, amino peptidase is working from amino group side of polypeptides. But the end products will result the same, tripeptides and dipeptides. Now tripeptides are acted upon by tripeptidase. Tripeptidase acts on tripeptides. So when I say tripeptide, it is chain of three amino acids. Tripeptidase acts on that and breaks one of the bond. And one of the bond is broken, it is converted like that. It is converted into dipeptide plus amino acid. So this is a dipeptide. It includes two amino acids and a peptide bond between that. Now there is still dipeptide left inside that. So its relevant enzyme so, is dipeptidase. So dipeptidase acts on this bond. So it converts that dipeptide. It is converted into two amino acids. So bond present between two amino acids are broken down. So we are seeing the digestion of proteins inside the small intestine. In the stomach, in the chyme, at the beginning, the proteins are partially digested, proteins are converted into peptones and proteoses and that food along with peptones and proteoses have come into small intestine. Now we got various enzymes here. Some of these enzymes are present in pancreatic juice, some of the enzymes are present in intestinal juice. All these enzymes are working in alkaline medium. Enterokinase, it is present in intestinal juice. Trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, these three are present in pancreatic juice. Enterokinase, aminopeptidase, tripeptidase, dipeptidase, all these are present in intestinal juice. Now, the first enzyme, trypsinogen, which is inactive, is activated with the help of enterokinase. So it becomes trypsin. Trypsin is also found by autocatalysis. The trypsin then comes and activates chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin. Once chymotrypsin also is found, both trypsin and chymotrypsin then come, they act on the end products of protein digestion inside the stomach, peptones and proteoses to polypeptides. Polypeptides are finally formed there. Now, there is another enzyme in pancreatic juice, pro-carboxypeptidase. It is also inactive, it is activated by trypsin to carboxypeptidase. Now carboxypeptidase along with aminopeptidase, aminopeptidase is coming from intestine. So both of them they act on polypeptides to produce tripeptides and dipeptides. Remember both of them carboxypeptidase, aminopeptidase are acting, are acting on polypeptides but aminopeptidase is coming from amino group side but carboxypeptidase is coming from carboxylic group side of the polypeptides. So finally, polypeptides are broken down into tripeptides and dipeptides. Now there are tripeptidases and dipeptidases. These two enzymes are present in intestinal juice. Now tripeptidases acts on tripeptides to convert that into dipeptides and amino acids. Dipeptidase acts on dipeptides to produce two amino acids. Now finally, proteins digestion is completed. So all proteins are finally broken down into amino acids.